The eighth of our ten and a half objects is the bell from Falkirk Steeple. In the middle of the 17th century, Falkirk was little more than a, a village. It was a small town um, and it was under the powerful influence of the Earls of Calendar. As patrons of the town, um, their political influence was able to gain borough status for the town and with that came the privilege to hold markets and to have trade guilds. Um, so it prospered and started expanding. Uh, the major um, symbol of that expansion at the moment is the High Street, which was extended eastwards and realigned. Uh, and as part of that realignment, they were able to incorporate a triangular marketplace. Uh, so this is uh, just an open triangular area in front of where the steeple now stands. Uh, in that open marketplace, they erected the Crosswell, which was one of our previous objects. And in 1697, the steeple itself, which uh, was originally known as a toll booth. And as the name suggests, it was uh, its function in life was to collect the tolls from the booths or the market stalls um, in the adjacent open area. Uh, it was administered by the stent masters um, and it was their task to make sure that all the goods that were sold in the market were of good quality so that the market kept its reputation. Uh, they would ensure, for example, that the meat wasn't bloated, uh, that it wasn't rancid, uh, that the bread weighed the right amount um, and the cheese wasn't often and so on. Um, and. Uh, at the same time as the, the building was constructed, the Earl of Calendar paid for a bell to be cast by one of the foremost uh, bell casters in Scotland, uh, John Meikle in Edinburgh. Um, and he then gifted the bell to the town of Falkirk. Uh, and you can see from the inscription on the bell itself, um, it tells you who the, the maker was, um, who the donor was, and that it was for Falkirk. So it's one of the first pieces of property that um, the, the public uh, owned collectively in the town. And its purpose was to broadcast uh, the, the time of day. So it would chime on the hour regularly uh, and that allowed them to regulate the marketplace below uh, but also um, daily life in the town. Uh, and uh, using the, the clock and the bell, uh, people in the town were able to know when to go to work, when to finish, when lunch was, uh, and when they should be doing the various tasks that they were uh, allocated. It also rang uh, whenever a monarch um, died or a new monarch was proclaimed. Um, and so you can imagine them proclaiming the, the new monarch on the steps of the steeple itself with the bell ringing its uh, dolorous tones uh, above. Um, it chimed uh, when there were victories to broadcast to the people. So the jubilation of events such as Trafalgar and Waterloo were commemorated by the steeple bell. Uh, it could also be used uh, to raise the alarm. So during the Napoleonic Wars, for example, when they were expecting a French invasion, it would have rang uh, constantly to tell people uh, that the uh, area had been invaded. And the same happened again in the Second World War. All the bells in the town, including bells in the other churches at this time, uh, had to remain silent unless the locality itself was invaded by the, the Germans. Um, the only exception to that was the victory at El Alamein, uh, which uh, was a, the first major Allied victory in the war um, and really it was a, was a marking point uh, in, in the way the war was being conducted. It sounded the death knell for local people, not just for the, the monarchs, uh, but the Earl of Calendar, it would have rung for him. Or if your family had enough money, you could pay for the bell to be rung uh, for a member of your own family itself. The bell acted as a call to prayer um, for the congregations um, in the town. Um, and originally, of course, that meant for the established church. Uh, but as more and more denominations appeared in the town, it was also rung for them uh, at the different times at which they were called to worship. The consequence of that, of course, was that the parish minister threatened a lawsuit against the stent masters who were responsible for the bell um, if they rang it for other congregations. And of course, the stent masters simply ignored the minister because by this time, the power of the established church was on the wane. 
uh, and that's what makes it one of the important objects that we have. Uh, the bell itself is 55 years older than the Liberty Bell in America, you know, so it's, it's a goodly age. Um, and the reason why it's one of our objects is because it marks the passage of time, uh, both um, in a literal sense, but also in the way uh, that it was rung for different occasions.